we hear of cord equina all the time. We have patients who come to us. They're operated uh, at a fair number, of course. Um, but I don't know if patients, general people, understand what it really means. And I think that coming from you would be a big help because people need to understand this terminology broadly and in ways in which they can then explain themselves. So how would you like to shed some light on that? Absolutely, that's a very valid point. Um, as, as, as doctors, we often throw in Latin terminology and medical terms and, and you tend to forget that um, people that are not from the medical field may not understand what you're talking about mm -hmm. and people are afraid to ask. So the term cord equine is particularly confusing because it actually is the Latin for horse's tail. And if you have been given a diagnosis of a horse's tail, that's not a particularly helpful thing. So what the horse's tail actually refers to, and I can show you in this picture, it's where the nerve rootlets mm -hmm. emerge from the bottom of the spinal cord. Mm -hmm. And that, the olden day anatomists looked at, and looked like a horse's tail, all the fibers coming out of the spinal cord. So this mm -hmm. is a frutus cord equina. In a medical context, if you are diagnosed with cord equina syndrome, this almost exclusively refers to disc hernias in the bottom of the spine, lumbar spine, where a disc hernia has occluded and compressed these fibers. Now the fibers of the cord equina are the fibers which are responsible for bowel and bladder control and sexual function. Mm -hmm. So if these fibers, which are very sensitive fibers, are impacted by a disc hernia or a tumor narrowing the spinal canal, then what that unfortunate person will suffer from is loss of sensation mm -hmm. in their privates, mm -hmm loss of their sphincter control for bladder control, for bowel control, and unfortunately it has an impact on sexual function as well. So this, all these conditions are lumped together as cord equina syndrome, mm -hmm. um, and there are very specific subcategories of this, of how, how fully developed the cord equina symptom mm -hmm. is. But in, in context also of, of treatments, um, it does depend on the degree of impairment as to what you can do for recovery. Yeah. No, I think it's important that they understand this in, in their terminologies because we always throw it at them. Oh, you have cord equina syndrome versus some patients who may not have cord equina syndrome with just a disc are very fearful of this terminology. So I just thought it was important for them to understand this. And as you said, I think this will help us also let our viewers know better the different ways they can deal with this and, and how we can help improve their sexual function when they have dysfunction because of the cord syndrome. So Absolutely. thank you very much. You're very welcome, Rina.